Zombie Apocalypse Chapter 7, Dream Sequence 2 Delta at Bunker Charlie, Episode 1, 15 May 2021. They however they had acquired the unknown virus were enraged, violent, mindless zombies filled with savagery. Whatever had happened to them, whether they were byproducts of a biohazard experiment gone wrong or they had breathed in too much toxic air, had caused them to kill and devour any living thing they came across, including humans. We designated them as afflicted things. These afflicted things commonly bit and tore into the flesh OT their victims. Usually once afflicted things had gotten their blade sharp teeth into their victims, there wasn't much left. Afflicted things avoided human intestines. I wondered, were these the same creatures responsible for the carnage at Bunker Charlie? We were to clear out an airport that was intested with them, a major campaign spearheaded by the bigwigs at UN headquarters code named WIPEM Clean. I was attached to a squad of six medics and RWO combat soldiers who functioned as guards. My partner, a guy from Hong Kong, standing 7 feet 3 inches and weighing 290 pounds, total muscle, was Leung Chi Chung, a former member of Hong Kong SWAT. He wanted us to call him the Red Communist Chinese Killer, but we called him HK Guy instead. HK Guy had geared himself up for combat, intending to survive the zombie apocalypse. He carried a shogun, a special ops AR-15, and three sidearms. He had far more combat experience than L, for that reason I followed his lead. Three combat squads went into the entrance of Terminal 1 to clear out the afflicted things. A host of other squads had been tasked with clearing out other parts of the airport. The UNHQ bigwigs wanted Incheon International Airport in Seoul cleared of afflicted things so that airport could function once again. The medic squad was 25 meters from the third squad. Thus far, nothing drastic had happened. The lead medic's radio was filled with shouts and screams, accompanied by a horrible uproar of agony and distress. Firefights erupted as all the other squads cleared every part of the airport. It sounded as if our guys were taking some heavy hits. Repeated requests for immediate evacuation and medical assistance were heard from almost every other squad clearing the airport, accompanied by pandemonium amid the firefights. All six medics were veterans of this type of conflict. The screaming didn't affect them. Their backpacks were twice their body weight. Each carried a sidearm M9. HK guy was in front, the six medics were in the middle, and I was covering the rear. The leader of the third squad spoke into the radio, doing a check with the lead medic. Doc, radio check. The lead medic responded, 25 meters behind, all go. Suddenly, loud firefighting erupted, so communication with that person went out. The lead medic warned others with her stare. HK guy checked the tracking device to ensure that we weren't farther than 25 meters behind the last combat squad. He said, we're at 26 meters. Follow me. We turned a corner, where HK guy paused with his weapon pointed forward. The firefights continued. The afflicted things screamed when the bullets ripped them apart. The leader of the first squad placed a distress call to medics. The lead medic said, on our way. With HK guy at the front, we rushed over there, running past the third and second squads, who were maintaining their defensive positions. None of them needed medical attention at the time. At the next corner, the entrance to the hallway, body parts of the afflicted things littered the ground, along with acid blood. The vast majority of the fallen afflicted things had died from being shot in the head. We'd been given strict orders to shoot the afflicted things in the head. There were about 50 of those things with their heads either shot off or shot into pieces. Their bodies were naked. Their fronts were marked by very large veins. Between that and the bullet holes, it was hard not to vomit. The afflicted thing's thick blood was also abnormal, extremely dark red and thick like glue, accompanied by the strong acidic smells of some unknown chemical. 
I was almost sure thing that these afflicted things and the other afflicted things were the end product of some biohazardous experiment gone amok or else an experiment that had yielded favorable results to the North Korean mad scientists, as they had hoped. Either way, the three combat squads, among others, had been mandated to kill on sites without fail. To be bitten by one of the afflicted things was a guaranteed death. We reached the first squad. One of the soldiers had been bitten in the neck with a large chunk of flesh missing, exposing the veins and fatty tissue. Those who were helping the soldier were extra careful not to touch her blood. The lead medic evaluated the soldier then told everyone to get back. The soldier was dead, yet her body was twitching in every which direction. The lead medic signaled for HK guy to shoot her in the head. The very moment HK guy raised his shotgun to proceed, the leader of the first squad tackled him. The two began wrestling with the others watching. Both got back on their feet. The leader of the first squad yelled, you're not shooting her head off. HK guy pushed his opponent against a wall, wagging his finger in his face. The height of the first squad leader was about 5 feet 6 inches, and HK guy was well over 7 feet 5 inches. Once the shorter guy realized that it would be useless to try to fight against his foe, he pulled out his sidearm and pointed it directly at HK guy's face. The lead medic yelled, take your weapon away from his face, or you'll face court-martial. The leader of the first squad used his left hand to take out his second sidearm which he pointed directly at the lead medic's head. Everyone else stood still and watched. He yelled, Let's see how you like having your head shot off. The lead medic yelled, this type of offense will get you hanged. I don't care, he responded. No one's going to shoot one of my soldiers heads off. The lead medic yelled, stand down. The leader OT the first squad fired one shot above the lead medic's head. His other squad members pointed their weapons at the eight of us, we pointed our weapons back at them. Had an accidental discharge happened with one side assuming that the other side had fired first, it would mean a bloodbath. The second and third squads rushed over at the sound of a gunshot. Both squads froze in their tracks with their weapons down. The leader of the second squad yelled, we're not each other's enemy. Those things are the enemy. All 19 of you, stand down. He yelled. No one listened. Who would be the first to crack under the pressure? All of you, stand down, or I'll personally escort every one of you to be court-martialed, the leader of the second squad warned. All 19 remained steadfast with their weapons raised. No one yicld ed. Both sides claimed to be in the right. Neither side trusted the other side. Soldiers from the second and third squads watched with wide open eyes, fearing an accidental discharge, which in turn would result in an all-out shootout. Without warning, the dead soldier's body twitched, although she had been dead for well over 20 minutes and hadn't breathed in 20 minutes either. Our attention shifted to the dead soldier. The dead body twitched more aggressively as it screamed horrifically. Then it went dead again. The twitching ceased. Then its eyes opened wide, and it moaned loudly. Its eyeballs rolled backward. Although its neck was missing a chunk of flesh with the veins ripped out and dangling in the air, the dead body became reanimated. It jerked itself up and became one of them, one of the afflicted things, and its primal need to feed upon warm flesh set in. It prepared to come for us. The leader of the first squad fired the 54 rounds from both sidearms at its head. Brain particles splattered everywhere. Other members of the first squad shot at its neck until it was completely decapitated, then all fire ceased. Everyone obeyed the command to stand down. At once, all six medics began performing complete evaluations of the other soldiers. HK Guy and the leader of the first squad sat next to each other in silence, their sweaty heads down. Once the medics had verified that there were no bite marks on any of the soldiers, the lead medic suggested Thar we all fall back to regroup.